A very good day, my dear postgraduate students. As I was scrolling through the university question papers, I came across certain weird questions that were seemingly easy to answer, but then so very difficult. I chose them and I have put them under a heading called SNP, Short Notes in Pathology for Postgraduates. And the topic for the day is PASH. Dear students, life is a pinch of salt. What am I meaning? We shall study, accept that we don't know everything, learn from others, and teach your colleagues and juniors. That is probably the expansion of salt. Let us see how far it is helping us. So this will be the contents for today's class. Even if it is going to be a small topic, always it is mandatory and good that we follow a list of sub -editions. Though all may not be applicable to all the answers. Definition. It is a myofibroblastic proliferation, mimicking a vascular lesion. So, PASH here means pseudo-angiomatous formal hyperplasia. Or sometimes it is also called as pseudo-angiomatous hyperplasia of mammary stroke. It was an incidental finding in the resected specimens, described by Vyu Chathal. 1986, and it has been diagnosed both by clinical and mammographic methods. It can be taken to be a mammary hematoma or otherwise. Coming to the epidemiology, it is more common in the premenopausal and the postmenopausal age groups, which means that there is some kind of a hormonal play in it. Men with gynecomastia, transgender, are also found to be having this occasionally. There can be a family history of a breast cancer later on. And the site is the best form. Etiology is hormonal stimulation of the myofibroblast. That is why you find that the pre-menopausal, post-menopausal, there is a peak. And this is a wonderful reference. I would like you people to kindly go through in pathology outlines. Grossly, as I told you earlier, it is an incidental finding. There can be a hard nodule that is spilled. But luckily, there is no puckering of the skin or additions. The size varies from 0.3 to 7 centimeters. It is usually unilateral, well circumscribed, smooth, maybe a little bosselated, as I am seeing over here. And the cut surface will be showing slit like spaces, which gives a fibroadenoma like picture. But then the age is against it. Stromal fibrosis will be seen, no areas of hemorrhage or necrosis. And it has to be correlated with the clinical and the radiological pictures. The differential diagnosis can be proliferative breast disease. A wonderful slide over here, again taken from pathology outlines. A HNE. I am finding that there are spindle shaped cells which are arranged in a story form pattern. And separating the bundles of spindle shaped cells, I am finding some pale areas as such under the low bone. So the diagnosis in this case is something like your dermatofibroma protuberance or so. But then there is a pseudoangiomatous stromal hyperplasia in this case. 
Tash, incidentally, I just scroll through and thesaurus, it gives a totally different meaning. It is a strong feeling of liking or loving someone or something, especially the feelings that do not last for a long time. Maybe many of us have gone through it or are going through it. Radiology. Today, radiology and pathology go hand in hand. In this case, I am able to find a well-circumscribed nodule. The arrows point. It is a case of a 48-year-old premenopausal woman. And it is a mediolateral as well as a craniocaudal view of it. It is isodense, round or oval. Heterogeneous it might be. Again, it is round or oval in shape. Asymmetrical, maybe bilateral, but then it is asymmetrical. Architectural distortion might be rarely seen. The parenchyma can be proliferating, but usually it is a stromal hyperplasia. There is no evidence of malignancy and the masses appear to be stable. This is an ultrasound picture of the scene, showing the transverse and the sagittal sections. The books say it can have a gynecomasia like picture. Here I am able to see the ductules alone without much of the glandular element. And there is a dense stroma almost like collagen bundles, marked desmoplasia. This also I would have called it as desmoplasia itself. But then web pathology gives a beautiful diagram wherein I am able to see multiple slit-like spaces which are again being lined by elongated cells. Under the light microscopy, this can give an illusion that it is an endothelial cell loss, wherein it becomes a vascular lesion rather than a stromal lesion. The microscopy. Kindly go through it you find that it is complex and interanastomosing spaces. Beautiful words. Slit-like spaces which are getting interanastomosed. And they are being separated by dense collagenous or fibrocollagenous stroma akin to a keloid. There are cells which are plump endothelium-like, giving a pseudoangiomatous picture, but there are no mitosis, no giant cells, no areas of necrosis. Fascicular patch. This is one wherein there can be a story form pattern that can be present. It resembles a myofibroblastoma. This picture I had already shown you, and there's a high power view of the same. Thanks to research gate, Perkos Archev. Ansel Dams. I do not know why I landed in these pictures, but then probably it is fast. Something that is appearing and then disappearing in my mind. A beautiful picture that is there of the snake river. Thanks to Agarwal, Hindu Agarwal, for these pictures. And she is incidentally an author in this pathology outlines. So I find that there is a marked proliferation of the glandular element. And there is a ductule over here. Maybe some kind of an apocrine metaplasia is seen with inspicited secretions. But more prominent will be the marked desmoplastic stroma that is there. Otherwise, I will end up giving a diagnosis of a fibrocystic disease with a hyperplasia alone, without ATP. But then, when a special strain is being done with CD34, there is a marked positivity of the stromal elements. You find that the ductal elements, the parenchyma is negative. So what are the markers? For any of the lesions, it will be better that we have a list of the markers so that ultimately you become very fluent with immunohistochemistry. ER and PR can be positive. 
there can be the spindle cells which are positive for it. CD34 is positive for the myofibroblast. Some amount of vitamin in desmin can be focally positive for the smooth muscles. Endothelial markers are negative and factor 8 is also negative. CD31 factor 8 is negative. This is important. And so also S standard and cytokeratin, which are indicative of aggressive lesions, such as the melanoma, are negative over here. The main principle of using these markers are to rule out an endothelial lesion and to rule out a multiplying or invading lesion. The differential diagnosis can be a mammary hematoma, phyllodes tumor, a low-grade angiosarcoma, myofibroblastoma, fibromatosis. This can be a list of differential diagnoses which you people can mention. Also, given in the list are stromal fibrosis. It can be associated with benign proliferative breast disease or even ductal carcinoma in school. There can be a gynecomastia-like picture that I had shown earlier. The treatment, however, will remain to be a local excision and observation. No recurrence has been found in this case. So this is another reference that is there from PMC. So it is a PubMed journal and I would like you people to kindly go through. I hope this is my last class or my everlasting class. Thank you.